Good evening dear brothers and sisters we warmly welcome all of you in the loving name of our lord and savior the lord jesus christ so to begin this gathering shall we all rise up and sing our first song bless the lord oh my soul hands i would like to invite brother nirmal to please come forward and come in this gathering to the lord's hands lord we thank you lord for having brought us this evening we thank you lord for the time of fellowship we thank you lord for having brought us to your house lord gather us in your name to worship you to glorify you father we thank you lord for having been with us throughout the week gone by we commit ourselves and our lives into your hands father pray lord that thou will guide us 
God has kept us, lead us, Father, for we have no help but you. Lord, you have brought each and of us here with a reason, Father. You have a plan and you have a purpose for each and every one of us present, Father. We thank you, Lord, for all those who are present. We pray for all those who are on their way. We commit all those who are playing the instruments into your hands, Father. And we commit thy servant who will bring us your word, Father. By committing the rest of the service into your hands, we ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Warmly welcome all of you and also especially the ones who are joining us online through Facebook and YouTube as well. And once again we are going to sing uh, the first, uh, sorry, the chorus and the last verse of Bless the Lord, O My Soul. So please join in singing as we sing this song. Bless the Lord, O My Soul, O My Soul. that day. All heavens declare the glory of the risen Lord. So we'll sing this while we remain standing. A couple of more songs lined up as well. So we'll start singing. All heavens declare the glory of the
again. How great is our God? unto the Lord and I will celebrate and there we end from Jehovah Jai.
for a while and before we listen to a special item we'll sing one more song it's an old song it's called um, Lord I come to you let my heart be changed renewed the words will come up on the screen so please do join in singing Sister Ruth De Silva. Who taught the 
check, check. Thank you, Sister Ruth, for that lovely special item. Yes, my Redeemer lives. And now, a uh, couple of more songs left, and we are going to sing about the Redeemer. It's none other than there is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. So shall we all stand up and sing this last two couple of songs? Because he lives. Because he lives, we all can face tomorrow. So shall we sing this with all the joy we have? God sent his son.
Praise the Lord. Good evening. Such a joy to see all of you singing and more increased joy in my heart to see Sister Jessica. We met her on Friday. The day I landed in Sri Lanka, God in a wonderful way has brought all of us together. It is truly so wonderful to see the goodness of God in our lives. Truly our God is a living God. Because he lives. Now may I ask, where does he live? If you ask me, yeah, maybe you also will answer the same. If you ask me, where does he live? I say, he lives within me. God with us. God in us, God for us, Emmanuel, God with us. If any man does not have the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. I will send you a comforter who will live in you, with you forever and ever. So we are never lonely, even in our loneliness. We always have the presence of our God. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I was thinking right there, because he lives, I can face next minute also, because I have to speak. You see? Standing and speaking, I am always afraid, but the Lord said, He is alive, for God is our help. Shall we turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 55? The thoughts the Lord has laid upon my heart for a short time of meditation about the gospel. Isaiah, chapter 55, and verse 6 and verse 7. I am reading in my Bible. You can follow it in your Bibles. Book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Dear brothers and sisters, may I request you to join with me in prayer as we ask the Lord to work amongst us. Shall we pray? Our loving, gracious, heavenly Father, our Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning with thee, thou changest not, thy compassions fail not, great is thy faithfulness. Our Father of all mercies, our Father who knows our need, our everlasting Father, our Father who has compassion upon us, who knows our frame, that we are dust. So we come to thee for help, that you may work in the hearts, in the lives of all of us who have gathered here. Lord, we thank you for your living, abiding presence with us. Thank you for your willingness to speak to your people. As for God, his way is perfect. We thank you, O Lord. Through thy spirit you are working amongst us. We pray now you may continue to speak and continue to work in our hearts for thy glory. We pray with humble thanksgiving in the name of our loving Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Most of us, we have 
a very wrong idea about our God. We think that God is at my mercy. Whenever the message of gospel is given, most of us, even me, I used to do like this. I thought God can wait for me. I can call him inside my heart whenever I want. Maybe after I grow up, maybe when I have time, I will think about this. Dear brothers and sisters, let me tell you, our God is not what we think. The idea of about, about our God is wrong. He is perfect. The Bible says, as for God, his way is perfect. His attributes, the nature or his attributes are perfect. For example, if you think about the love of God, the love of God is perfect. The, the Lord loves us with an everlasting love, unfathomable love, love which passeth all the knowledge. But at the same time, our God's judgments also are perfect. Our God's anger also is perfect. And to the surprise, both of them can dwell at the same time. So when God is inviting you lovingly, do not think that he is going to love you all the time. Whenever you want him, you can call him to your heart. No, that is not the case. This same God who is loving you, inviting you, this same God who is asking you, beseeching you, requesting you, can also harden your heart. Dear brothers and sisters, this verse, Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, Seek the Lord when he is found. There is a time, there will be a time when you cannot find him. When you have an opportunity to decide, you must decide. Maybe you will not be given any other opportunity after you listen to the gospel. If the Lord is making you listen to the gospel twice or thrice, now you are given more grace. If you are still hardening your heart, you may not have another opportunity. And the Bible also says, Call upon him while he is near. We all know that our Lord Jesus Christ is a lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the whole world. Lamb, very humble, tender, very loving, very patient, you see. But this lamb, after some time, you can see him as a lion. John, the beloved apostle, the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, who was leaning upon the bosom of the Lord Jesus Christ during his lifetime. This same John, when he saw the Lord Jesus Christ in his glory, in his resurrection glory, he writes, I fell down as a dead man. Dear friend, this is the danger and this is the knowledge about our God. Do not think only about him as a lamb. He is also a lion. And he can be at the same time a lion and the lamb. Oh, what a wonderful God we have. His glorious attributes are worthy for our humble adoration. There is none like him. And this same God he is inviting us like this. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 7. Isaiah 55 verse 7. You can just observe when I am reading. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. This is also the invitation of God Jehovah calling the people that they should forsake their own way. The Bible says, there is a way which seems right, which seems good, which seems perfect unto our eyes. But the end thereof are the ways of death. 
now you may be also having this kind of idea of following god loving god or believing in god in your own way we all have this idea of thinking about our god you see even the non really non christians they think about god but they say we have our own way but the bible says the lord is asking us to forsake our own way the only way you can trust upon is the new and the living way which god has ordained i am the way i am the truth i am the life there are many ways to hell only one way to heaven there are many ways to hell only one way to heaven one day i was preaching the gospel distributing the gospel tracts in the country where i am living now and there was one cabinet minister the minister in the president's cabinet i do not know he was just walking about and i just gave him a gospel tract and he read this and said i thought you are a muslim then i said i believe in the lord jesus christ and he asked me do you also believe in the other religion or the other god he named it i am not mentioning it now then i said no sir i don't believe it jesus christ he is the only way then he said my friend you must believe that all ways are the same all ways lead to god you must believe this then you can be my friend then i said to him in a plain way only the lord jesus christ is the way to the father you cannot reach the father you cannot come to the father except the lord jesus christ no man had seen god no man can ever see god only the one who is upon the bosom of the father the lord jesus christ the brightness of the glory of god the express image of the person of god only he only him through him you can see god we can see god through lord jesus christ he is the only way sometimes uh, brother bak singh of india he has written like this in his book i have read sometimes in a very big buildings some buildings are so high inside people struggle to look towards the top of the building and there is made a provision to see the top of the building there is kept a glass a mirror on the floor and through the mirror you can see the top in the same way you can see god through the lord jesus christ the only way now the another another one i want you to think about is and the unrighteous man his thoughts we have to forsake our own way and forsake our own thoughts to come to this living and true god that is gospel the bible says god knows that our thoughts are vanity yes anyone can help me in reading psalms 94 okay let me read psalms 94 verse 11 book of psalms you can listen to me if you do not have a copy of bible we are reading from Psalms 94 and verse 11 The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity All the thoughts we think are vanity The Bible also says the thoughts and imagination of man is evil continually Dear friend God can read your thoughts right now. God knows what you are going to think. How evil our thought life is. Before we commit any sin of or any crime, it starts in our mind. God can know our thoughts. God can read our thoughts. That's why we all stand equally guilty before this holy and loving God. what happens if a person sitting next to you can know your thoughts what happens if your husband knows your thoughts 
what happens if your wife can read your thoughts? Then she will say, I thought you are like an angel. But now I see the devil. There's the same even with the preachers also. We look like angels. But we all fall short in our thought life. God knows our thoughts, yet he loves us. That is the goodness of God. I wanted to speak about the knowledge of God. Nothing can be hidden from him. You cannot conceal or hide anything. There was no man seeing Cain killing his brother. But this all wise God has seen it. He was witness. Yes, dear friend, you cannot hide. Behind the closed curtains, darkest, deepest dungeons are all open before him. That's why I always encourage, whenever you come to God, you should come with an open and upright heart. Please do not try to act before God. Don't try to project yourself as a religious good or a person who loves God. Do not try to act before God because he knows everything about you. We cannot act before him. Uprightness is the quality which God loves. Tell the Lord, Lord, this is my condition. There is a person in the Bible, David, he says, Lord, cleanse me from my secret faults, presumptuous sins, things which we, I did not even know that I have committed wrong. We do not know sometimes. But we have grieved God. We have grieved our brothers and sisters. That is uprightness. Come to God and honestly accept your condition before him. The Lord accepts us. The Lord loves when we come to him with humble and a contrite spirit. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Now the third important thing, another important thing is, let him return unto the Lord. Let him return unto the Lord. Most of the people who commit sin, after they commit sin, they feel bad about it. They feel sorry about it. Yes, they even decide that they should not do it again. But that is not enough. Regret is not repentance. Even remorse is not repentance. That will not help you. Regret is a thing which it happens in your mind. You see, most of the time we regret about many things. Sometimes we even may show some remorse, emotions, crying. But that is not enough. God wants us to repent. Repentance is turning back to God. Repentance is hatred towards sin because it grieves God. So do not just be satisfied that you are sorry for your sin. That will not do. Many prisoners in the prison, they feel bad that they have done wrong. The only reason is because they are caught. You see? If they are not caught, they are not sorry. So that is not genuine repentance which God loves. God wants us to turn to him. If you may remember the story of the prodigal son, I want you to think about that. Come to Luke's Gospel, chapter 15. Luke's Gospel, chapter 15 and verse 18. <clears throat> Luke's Gospel, chapter 15. Yes, verse 17, please. I'm reading verse 17. Luke 15 and 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. This is the point where his life took a U-turn. We all know his story, that he was a rebellious son. <clears throat> we all are like that. Yes, I heard our brother sharing long time. Sitting here, we can be in a far country. So we all are rebellious children to our father. But this one, he came to himself. And then, first thing, 
he did not say that i have done something wrong no he said in my father's house and he remembered his father's love he remembered how good his father is he thought about his father's heart towards the hired servants the servants who work in my father's house they eat plenty now dear friend repentance starts with the goodness of god in your heart you should think about that how good our god is the goodness of god will lead you to repentance then that will bring forth some kind of an important kind of change or transformation or else we are just deciding i'll be good boy or a good girl good person or a woman and after some time we are the same that is not the desire of god that is not the intention of gospel gospel wants the gospel makes you to turn to god now he said in my father's house there is food now dear friend think about your father god as your father god is a loving father the bible says he is a compassionate father as a father pitieth his children this god will pity you show compassion on you and he will forgive your sin god's heart is like a heart of a loving father the bible says when the lord jesus christ was born his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace everlasting father the one who can carry us until the end just as a father carries his children our god is willing to carry us jesus is the wonderful savior there was one chorus i am remembering jesus is a wonderful savior he will carry you through until the battle is done and the victory is won my lord will carry you through oh my loving brother you'll need my jesus when the world's on fire he will hide you ever in the rock of ages just cleft for you he is an everlasting father more than an earthly father god's loving heart it has more space for us and also the bible says father knows our need he knows our need before we even ask him before he, he, you even come to him he, he knows what you need how much more shall your heavenly father give good things to those that ask him he is a rich father he can provide everything in abundance abundance of pardon forgiveness rich people give so much of riches to their children and also the bible says he is a father of all mercies merciful father wonderful merciful father now i want you to also think about the mercy of god that's that's the next thing which is in isaiah chapter 55 isaiah 55 and verse 7 let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the lord and he will have mercy upon him mercy of god is an important character of god through which we can come to him mercy god not giving us something which we deserve we deserve punishment we deserve the wrath of god the wages of sin is death the wages of sin is eternal death eternal separation but god who is rich in mercy slow to anger full of compassion quick to forgive he wants to show his mercy upon you so mercy of god it means god not giving you what you deserve grace of god means god giving you something which you 
do not deserve we do not deserve to be called as his children but god is giving that privilege to us we deserve the punishment of god but god is not giving that david cried unto the lord saying lord remember me according to your merciful kindness moses asked the lord to show lord show me your glory then god showed his glory in this way the name of the lord and the first thing which god showed to moses was lord god merciful and gracious merciful god you should not miss this merciful god showering his mercy upon you or else dear friend you will see the wrath of god you will see the judgment of god the anger of god you cannot bear that anger he is a merciful god and also this mercy reminds us that god was willing to punish his son in his mercy upon us god mercilessly killed his son an innocent son for you and for me yes dear friend lord jesus christ was crucified without mercy without any pity he was beaten bruised broken upon the cross of calvary one of the most painful thing i ever find lord jesus christ bearing is the thorns upon his head you see the bible says thorns have come about on the earth because of sin the curse of sin the lord cursed the earth and said now the earth shall bring forth thorns and thistles so this curse was laid upon the lord jesus christ he was made a curse for us a curse and he carried our curse do you believe these things like ancestral curse in both in our sri lanka people say that there is ancestral curse that curse this curse on the family and you are worried something wrong is happening because of some curse there is only one curse curse of sin curse of law we all equally are under the curse we are cursed people but lord jesus christ about him it is written he is blessed son of god who loved righteousness who a hated unrighteousness he is a blessed son of god was made a curse for us and also thorns on the head of lord jesus christ remind me about our evil imaginations in our thoughts and minds through which we commit sin the lord jesus christ was paying for all the wicked thoughts we think and now he says he will abundantly pardon forgiveness of the lord jesus christ we must experience a forgiven sinner we all must be forgiven by the lord again and again dear friend if you are not forgiven you will be condemned when the lord is pleading with you in his mercy saying my son your sins will be forgiven you please do not reject this offer if you reject this offer you may not find one more opportunity you will not find another opportunity i listened to a story of one judge of a court disguised himself as a normal man went to a prisoner who is condemned to death and he went as a no- normal man to give him forgiveness or speak to him about god's love and forgiveness this man said i have heard enough in my life i am fed up of this i do not want to talk to you please get out of my place the same person who came in a simple way beseeching requesting the next day this prisoner saw this man upon the judgment throne in the high court now this prisoner's heart was broken now dear friend that is the same case it will happen to us now the lord jesus christ is pleading then men and women in the world say we do not need him he is a poor fellow 
You see, they despise him, but they are going to see him on the judgment throne, and they will sob and they will smite their chest and say, "Oh, this is a person who came to us in a simple way. Now he is on the throne. It is a privilege to know our God in a way what he is. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords." he is a king eternal immortal invisible only wise god he is the king of righteousness he is the king of peace he is the king of nations king of zion he is the king of the whole earth you cannot afford to make fun of him or despise him dear friend you will see him in his glory and you will fall as a dead man but there is a privilege that you also can be called as a king with him you are called for his kingdom that's the next thought i want you to think isaiah 55 and verse 8 isaiah 55 and verse 8 for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts the thoughts which god has towards us are called higher than the heaven higher than the earth precious thoughts oh how precious are your thoughts toward me manifold multitude of thoughts if i start counting them they are many in number the thoughts of our god are so deep thy thoughts o god are so deep dear friend do you believe that god is carefully meticulously thinking about you every moment every minute he is designing your life he cares for you he plans the future for you Do you know that God knows your end? God knows your future. God knows what you are going to be. His thoughts for us are personal. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. Thoughts to give you an expected end. I always used to think God is having some enmity with me. So every day I think God is going to beat me, punish me. No dear friend his thoughts are so different thoughts so precious thoughts the thoughts even my parents did not have about me god has what is man that thou should, that you are mindful of him exclaim the psalmist when i think about the sun moon and stars what is man made out of dust dust we are ashes we are you see we are like a grass like a flower what are we else compared to we are like a shadow we are like a tale like a story told we are like a water bubble water vapor the bible also says you are like a dust of a balance drop in a bucket you are like a grass hopper the other day we went upon the lotus tower and we saw all the colombo looking very small and human beings were not even properly visible now imagine you climbing so high which is made by man but when you go to heaven i believe if you go you can't even find earth where is earth you can't find it man is so insignificant in his stature but it is a surprise for me also why should sit such a great god think about me plan for me every moment every day such is the love of god you cannot understand this only believe fall at his feet and say lord jesus i offer my life i am so surprised about your love he is mindful about you that is the reason why you are sitting here you have not come here by accident with god there are no accidents do you know that 
God will not say oops. God will not be surprised. For him everything is finished before the foundation of the world. We are very clear before him. Like open glass he can see us. So dear friend, do not think that you are sitting here by chance. No. The Lord, when the spirit of God is convicting you in your heart, it is not by chance. It is God's planned visitation. From eternity past, he is planning for you. He is mindful about you. He has been mindful of us. David says, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. How much encouragement and comfort this should give to your heart, dear friend. That this great and mighty God, who is the Lord of all creation, more than 8 billion people in this world, but he can attend to you with complete attention, as if you are the only person in the whole earth. Such is the love of God. It is unimaginable, incomprehensible, but it is true. There is only, there is a blessing when you believe. That's the truth. You believe so many things, but why don't you believe in God? We believe. We trust many things every day. But please believe in this God whose thoughts are about you. There is one song which says, Pass me not, O gentle Saviour. Hear my humble cry. And while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. The reason why I'm saying this song is, you should know that he can pass by you. If you neglect him, if you count him as a mean or some person, like a human being, he can pass you by. Our God is so gentle that he will not break through your heart. He knocks your heart. He waits for you. But dear friend, please do not take that for granted. There is going to come a time when you will be left out if you reject him. So we plead with you. We can sing that song as we pray, as we surrender ourselves to him. Pass me not, O gentle Saviour, Hear my humble cry. I learn others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, yeah, my humble cry. And while others thou art calling, do not pass me. Let me at the throne of mercy. Let me at the throne of mercy. Find a sweet relief. Find a sweet relief As I kneel in deep country Help my unbelief Savior, Savior Hear my humble cry and while others thou art calling do not pass me now as we silently pray talk to God in your heart Savior please do not pass me by I call upon you, Lord Jesus. Please do not pass me by. I am willing to forsake my own way and my vain thoughts. I am willing to return to the Father's house to find a sweet relief. 
abundance of forgiveness abundance of entrance into heaven please pray this prayer in your heart he was beaten for you bruised for you so thank him thank the lord jesus for his mercy our gracious loving heavenly father our merciful and gracious god our father of all mercies we deserve punishment we deserve the wrath of god we are the children of wrath children of disobedience thank you for your precious thoughts towards us to make us as your children and the kings and priests in your kingdom to rule with you to sit with you oh lord we thank you this is all because of lord jesus christ who paid the penalty of our sin we thank you for all the thoughts you have towards your people we humbly pray anyone who is calling upon you lord through thy spirit work in their hearts they may come to you for salvation and thou may visit them thou may uplift them thou may transform their lives oh lord we believe in your power in your ability you are able to save us to the uttermost you are able to help us we thank you for this evening we pray that you may send us with your blessings we thank you for everyone who has come we pray with humble thanksgiving in the highly exalted name of our lord and our savior the lord jesus christ we pray amen amen